thank you for joining us. As usual, we've got some exciting news to deliver to our friends in the press and want to make sure you are the first to find out about this. Um, so, without further ado, uh, we are previewing our new 360 Link plugin at NAM this year. So, sorry, please, come in, come in, ladies, gentlemen, come in. So, a few years ago, we started introducing our range of controllers. Uh, the UF8 Advanced Door Controller, more recently the UF1 Master Controller, but also UC1, the SSL Plugin Controller. That has somewhat changed as of today, uh, and the reason for that is it can now control any plugin, not just SSL, our own, our own channel strips and bus compressors, but the wealth of other SSL branded, licensed channel strips out there. But it doesn't stop there. It's any plugin. It could be effects. It could be an amp simulation. It can whatever. How does it do that? You ask. So we have developed this. So as you can see, this is a blank plugin, and what we're doing is we are shipping this with a set of templates from our three favourite partners in the industry. So there's CLA Mix Hub, there's Harrison Channel Strips in there, there's also Virtual Mix Rack from our friends at Slate. If a plugin is not on that list, you can manually map it, and we've taken the pain out of mapping. Mapping plugins is a pain in the arse, frankly. So what we've done is there's a se series of intuitive tools. It's bi-directional mapping. You can click the plugin and then twizzle the knob or vice versa. You can drag and drop. You can do a combination of these things depending on what mood you're in. Um, point being, it's fast, it's simple, and if the factory map is not there, you can map, map it yourself. So an example would be, Here we are. So this is the UAD 4K channel strip. As you can see, I, this is the 4K e UAD channel strip, and as you can see, I am controlling one of the EQ, the EQ on there. So if we go to another, if we go to another instance, we can look at another plugin. Uh, that's another UAD. There we go. We've got Harrison Fast Track on this one. So what we're doing is we are opening the doors, excuse the pun, to a world of more creative options, more sonic flavours and more engineering tools. What does this do? This is, this is really where the vision of this ecosystem started a few years ago. It's the virtual SSL console, but now you can add all the flavours and tricks and, and plugins that you, you desire to it. So we're previewing it now, and the plugin will be available free of charge on the SSL website early March. Um, you can head to a PR media hub for more information, speak to my colleague Jeff for media packs, press releases, image assets. Um, there's a tutorial, not tutorial, there's an overview video online which we can share links to. Um, yeah, exciting stuff. We have got three new hardware units from Harrison. So first foray into the 500 series uh, market uh, and we have got three production tools taken from Harrison consoles from the 70s, 80s and 90s. And I'm going to hand over here to Gary, Gary, President of Harrison Audio, to give you the rundown on it. I'll give you a quick rundown. So. In this box, we have uh, two, each of the three new 500 series modules. Uh, the first one here on the left, this is the preamp and the high pass and low pass filters from the 32 classic console. So we took that circuitry directly out of the console and made a 500 series module out of it. So it's got that beautiful Jensen transformer on the front end of the preamp and the really nice Harrison high pass, low pass filters uh, on the module as well. Uh, the second module is interesting. This is an EQ. It is not the EQ that's in that console. This is an EQ we made about eight years after the original console came. And this was a design, uh, the, the original analog design engineer also worked at Harrison up until about two weeks ago. He finally retired. And I asked him about four months ago, out of all the thing, all the equalizers that he made, which one did he like the best? And he liked this one, so I said, we're gonna go ahead and make that EQ. It's a three-band EQ, and this comes from, 
vintage from about 1982, so about 40 years ago design. At that time, uh, we were just starting to make EQs with variable uh, Q control, and we wanted to, the original EQs had a proportional e, uh, Q design on there. We left that on the high and the low bands, but the mid band we put a, a, a variable Q on there. We made a three band EQ instead of a four band EQ. And this made the frequency range just a little bit wider, a little bit, a lot of people don't like a four band EQ. They don't really know what to do with it. There's, there's an extra band in there that maybe confuses them a little bit. So we took a little step back, made a three band EQ, put the Q control on the mid band, and included a high pass filter, not a low pass filter. Uh, Dave Harrison, who I worked with for many years, he always told me that low pass filter is uh, a luxury. So we didn't put it on. We had a lot of products with the low pass filter, but this particular EQ had the the uh, had the high pass filter. So three band EQ, variable Q on the mid band, proportional Q on the high and low bands, and a high pass filter. Then we made a compressor module, and this is a real utility compressor. Very very nice leveler, very warm sounding circuit. This we designed in the early 90s. So this design came from a console that was used in broadcast app applications, places where we really needed automatic gain control. And so we never really put compressors in consoles before that, but we decided to do that as they started to become more and more popular. And now, of course, in music production, people, lots of different flavors of compressors. So we stuck with a real simple leveler design. Uh, all the simple controls are on there and bring a really competitively priced uh, compressor module to the 500 series. So that's kind of what we did. And here they are, you can come up and, and take a look. You can uh, you see what the, what the artwork looks like, what the knob layouts and all that. So what's the price point to you uh, the, the, the preamp with the filters is uh, $699. And the other two, the EQ and the compressor, are $399. So we think it's a pretty competitive uh, entry into the into the market. So, uh, the preamp module is much more expensive. It's got that really nice Jensen transformer in there, and up the price goes. So uh, that's kind of what that that's the reason for the price difference. Are we good? Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks for coming. As always, appreciate your time. Uh, any questions, give us a shout. Have a good show, everyone.